Welcome to the women's soccer portion of our fall recap Olympics sports series. I'm Bryson Turner. With me is Eric Lopez. And to recap the season for women's soccer, we have midfielder Daria Rajai. Daria, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How does it feel? We were talking before the recording. You were you said you were graduating in a little bit. How's it feel? Yeah, I mean, it's an awesome feeling. I graduated last fall summer time with my bachelor's and just to be graduating with my master's I mean to get it done in the five years feels great so yeah that's pretty good uh t- tell us a little bit what this last four or five years has been like for you because you've you know we'll talk about the on the what on the field but you get your bachelor's and a master's out of here you see you could tell us what your degrees are on but like what has it been like being a student athlete here at UCF? Yeah, I mean, so I got my bachelor's in kinesiology, and then I went for my master's in the same thing. Um, yeah, so I'll be graduating in a couple of days with my master's in kines- kinesiology. Um, I mean, it's been a great ride. We've had like so, so ma- we just have so many resources here at UCF that it's like everything, I wouldn't say is easy, but I mean, definitely the people around make it so much easier to go through school while playing a sport. Um, so yeah, my past five years were just awesome. What what got you to come to UCF? Uh, I know you had obviously family blood in the in, at UCF, so I'm sure that played a role, which you can expand on. But what drew you to UCF? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the first time I saw UCF's campus was like you said, like um, my sister played volleyball there, so that was my first time coming to see the campus. I fell in love. Um, I mean, just hearing about her experience, um, kind of like reeled me in and then obviously, um, going on recruiting visits, meeting the coaches, um, meeting the academic staff, the team, the culture that they had. I mean, that's what sealed the deal. That's pretty good. What I'm trying to remember now, your sister played volleyball, what years? 2016. Let's see. She's. She's four years older than me. So when I came in as a freshman, she left. She played, I think, two years or one, yeah, one year, 2016, 2015. Yeah, that sounds about right. See, because my I watched her play volleyball. So I remember when you first got to campus, if soccer, I'm like, wait a minute, did she play <laughs> volleyball? Like, yeah. Uh, so, like, was soccer always your goal? Because obviously she played volleyball. Was soccer your thing? I mean, what tell yeah. us a little And what was it like, you know? with each other because you both are competitive athletes yeah I mean I grew up in a very athletic family my my parents met playing playing beach volleyball my dad grew up playing soccer so I have two other siblings obviously Farah um and then my brother Jahan we all three grew up playing soccer and then me and Farah grew up playing volleyball as well and kind of like in our high school years we had to choose which sport to play more competitively try to actually get recruited for um she chose volleyball and I chose soccer. So it's kind of how it went. But yeah, I mean, everything kind of worked out. That's pretty sweet. I mean, you yeah. got to go, you got to watch her play volleyball at the venue. And then now you played at soccer. It makes some history yourself. Let's kind of talk about this year, but all of you together, because you, Kristen Scott, Caroline Delisle, I mean, Bryce, you've got the long list. You did the feature on Kristen Scott, but you all basically came around the same time yep. together. And, you know, had some ups and downs, uh, you know, on the field going. So take me through the mindset going into this year where, you know, this is your last year. Yeah. I mean, I think the mindset was definitely different knowing that this was going to be our last year playing together. I mean, obviously coming in as freshmen, we wanted to do the same. We wanted to win, but knowing that this was our last year together um, and playing with some of the people that we came in, like, for example, Carolina and Dana have an extra year of eligibility, but like me and Kristen didn't. So just kind of knowing that this was our last year to do it together really meant a lot. Um, And then kind of just the whole process of like being together from our freshman year to our senior year, um, just like all the memories that we've had, um, the ups and downs that we have gone through just carried a lot of weight. So, I mean, it definitely helped us stick together through all the lows and then carried us through the highs too. So it was great. It was a great feeling doing it with them, though. 
Well, you certainly have plenty of highs this season. Only two losses throughout the course of the entire season because, of course, all the penalty kick stuff counts <laughs> as draws. And, of course, one of those draws was to the – was and well, two of those – two of the, your draws came against both teams that finished in the national championship game. What does it feel like for you to feel like you've gone – like, like you you basically kind of, you know took taking the feet the pitch with these two teams and to see them kind of go at it for the national title was it say about where this program is right now yeah I mean I think it just shows how how strong of a team we were I mean it's obviously unfortunate that we weren't in that national championship game but I mean knowing what we were capable of knowing that we tied the winner <laughs> um I mean still feels great just because we know that that could have been us. I mean, didn't go our way and that's just how sport is sometimes, but yeah, just knowing that um, we can look back on, on those games and be like, yeah, we held our own. When was it during the season or maybe before the season where you felt this group was special? Like this was your year. This was the year you were not only going to make the tournament, but you would end up winning the conference regular season title, the first for the program since 2017. Was there a moment, a game or uh, uh, that you just all felt this was different? This year was different than past years. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think one of our first away trips was LSU, if I remember correctly. And Last year, LSU, I think we lost, what, 3-0? Yeah. Or they, yeah, they totally dominated us. And that game, the first half, we played so incredibly well. And I was like, wow, like, this team is something special. I mean, and, and from that game on, I mean, I think we tied that game too. But it felt more like a loss just because we played so well. And then from that, there on out, like, every game just – I had that high expectation because I knew – what this team was capable of you have that a you know in the aac regular season title i i put it down we have the uh our post athletic year awards and i feel like that and i put that down for moment of the year because i saw your you guys' reaction as you guys were crowding around the phone to see what was going on with the other matchup that would decide if you took had taken the title yet or not and i noticed that kristen that right around you it figured out kristen scott sort of stumbled back a little bit kind of the realities of it hitting it and then several of you guys ended up going there just tell me what was kind of going through you, your minds or the, i don't know if you exchanged anything or what was going through your heads at that moment you, as you guys were kind of finding out and kind of slowly it all was hitting you that you know your conference champions right after you yeah. had beaten houston right after yeah. you had just literally beaten houston and now you're waiting to find out the south florida cincinnati result which you knew that if south florida lost you were going to be champions we were people watching on the broadcast they were watching both matches they were doing picture in picture but what was it like from your perspective and the players yeah i mean we had a great conference season um so i think like from that moment we just we thought we had another game we thought we were going to play USF but I mean and like you said we played we just won against Houston um made it even more special that it was senior day um but yeah I mean I think our game ended like maybe a couple minutes earlier and then they were like I don't I don't know who it was but someone got the team together and was like guys like Cincinnati's winning like USF is about to lose we can win right now and like, we didn't even think that of that as a possibility because we're so like, okay, get the job done next game. We'll get it. We'll get it done again. So we thought we were going to play USF. We knew the job wasn't done yet, but then that just came as an extra hoorah. Like when we saw that moment, I mean, it, it was a great feeling. Like it, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. That's a moment you won't forget any time to celebrate at home. And yeah. that was the cool thing is you were able to celebrate at home instead of waiting to play USF in Tampa and maybe winning and celebrating in Tampa instead, but you got to celebrate at home. So that had to make it extra sweet there. Yeah, for sure. With all of our families there as well. So that was special. On senior day. Is it, that was your senior day yep. uh, there. What was different this year about your defense? Your defense was much improved this year. I think you would say from last year, what stood out different? I mean, obviously you had some great backline depth was a factor, but just talk about your defense improvements this year as a team. Yeah, I mean, obviously with two new transfers coming in, we had Georgia and Khalees. We kind of knew that we had to get on top of it right away. We didn't have much time to gel together, but I think what really helped us was um, how how uh, veteran our back line was just because that's what helped, like, lead. I mean, 
it's hard having freshmen come in and be like, okay, let's gel together, <laughs> take some time. But I think Georgia and Khalees being fifth years, them coming in, them knowing what the standard is, um, our expectations definitely helped flow with the back line. And then just, I mean, Tiff is always taking, she loves the defenders. She, that's her, that's her big thing is defending. Um, so I think just knowing that and holding ourselves accountable, we knew we had to gel together. Um, yeah, just up the communication, up the accountability. And we knew we, we would be successful from there on out. Did, you, did it feel like that with the addition of Georgia and, and, and Khalees that you kind of had that, I guess, missing piece, I guess, from that 2021 season? Because you guys did pretty well in that 2021 season and the conference play, it just sort of kind of the wheels fell off a little bit. So do you think that this season getting Georgia and Khalees really helped fill that maybe what was what you guys could you know improve on from that 21 year? Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say a missing piece, but it was just that we were, I mean, the season with injuries and stuff, we were just lacking more, more so the depth. Um, and that's what they brought to us. So I wouldn't say that we, we didn't have like good enough players or whatnot, but just, I mean, the season <laughs> takes a toll on people's bodies, their mental health, like all that. So um, having the depth and them come in really helped us. Yeah. How does, it, how does it feel to for you to now, you know, you talk about how the season takes a toll. How does it feel to be able to go, to, you know, go through that, you know, I guess grind this time and then come out conference champions and make it to the tournament finally? Um, Because <laughs> considering how tight knit your group is, I remember talking to you for the Kristen Scott profile and you told me about your history with her. So how does it how did how did it feel to, you know, be in that tournament matchup in that tournament environment? finally for you guys yeah I mean it was a great feeling <laughs> I remember we were at Island Wing waiting for for our name that was a stressful long. one that turned in a little that more stressful, stressful. Than it was supposed to be right <laughs> yeah we were waiting a little too long <laughs> we were waiting and we were like the second to last team called <laughs> and I mean it was just a great feeling I I feel like we deserved we were good enough to to go to the tournament in the past but um, for all that work to actually pay off, like being the last year, it just made it even more special. Yeah. Well, I was there with you, uh, watching that and it was nerve wracking. Cause I think we, and I don't know, you could tell me if I'm wrong. I think the sense was, Hey, we're going to get announced early. Then when Florida state name popped up, you're thinking, well, maybe we'll get, you know, linked with them and all that, but you didn't. And then we yeah. they kept naming names or you're like, so we are in, right? <laughs> but like, what goes yeah. through your mind? Is it like, are you having doubts as this goes on? Are you getting nervous? What is what is it going? Yeah, I mean, I we definitely went in thinking we were. I mean, what we were ranked like in the top twenty five, like we were what twenty second probably. We were like, oh, we'll probably for sure get a seed at like like an eighth seed. We weren't expecting like any high four or five, but we were like maybe like a maybe a seventh or eighth seed. So every time an eighth seed popped up, we were like, that's us guys. <laughs> and then it wasn't us. And we were like, oh no, <laughs> what's happening? We didn't have this watch party for nothing. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, I think the NCAA just wanted to stress this out. <laughs> Wait until the very last team to be called. <laughs> Keep it dramatic. And then you do get announced. You're going on the road to NC State. What was the reaction there going on the road, playing NC State? I didn't get a sense though from talking. I remember we, I spoke to Kristen and Carol. I didn't get a sense you all were that bothered by it because you've played on the road in tough places like LSU you mentioned earlier. You played at Utah Valley and you played North Carolina right, in Chapel Hill earlier in the year, which Coach Sahedek brought up. But what was your reaction playing NC State going on the road back to uh, up to the state of North Carolina? Yeah, I mean, I think we were just so excited that <laughs> we didn't really care who we played because um, we knew no matter what, like our coaches – would do the scout. We'd go over everything just like a normal game, um, go through the process the same. So yeah, we were just really excited, uh, ready to get to work and get going to play them. You certainly had quite the game of your career right there in that NC State game. You got that penalty kick goal, which of course forced that extra overtime period in the first place to tie the game up. And then of course you end up being the final penalty kick needed for you for you for you guys to win that match so just take me through that th through that game and like your mindset at, at, during both of those times where you got your got got set and got your eye on the ball for that for those pks yeah 
I mean, <laughs> so before the game, we actually have a penalty order of like who's taking the penalties. Um, and I'm, I was number one for this game day and we've been practicing penalties. Cause when we get into postseason, that's when games don't just end in ties. You got to go penalty, see who moves on. Um, so we've been practicing that we've been looking at, um, strategies, uh, what percentages of penalties go in, how, how to consistently make them and all that. Um, so I think even before the game, I was mentally prepared to take one, um, I think, I think when Kristen, it was Kristen who got fouled. I think when Kristen went down, I immediately just started to calm myself because I know that's like the number one thing. If you're not calm taking a penalty, um, you'll get in your head. So yeah, just kind of try to calm myself down, um, stick to the way that I decided I was going to go before the game even started and then just put it away. Yeah. Well, what's wild is you as a team had just gone through penalty kicks the week before against Memphis. So here you are back in it, but I, I want to move ahead to first to the first penalty kick yet. Cause it's rare that a player gets two penalty kicks in one match, which is what you ended up doing, which for those that don't follow soccer closely, that, that could be mental sometimes. Cause now you're thinking, mm -hmm. do they know my, you know, rep, you know, my things where I like to do and things like that. So first, you have a PK in the 71st minute. You're down 1-0. Take me through that one because I think you you that one's underrated because you know what's at stake there at that point probably, but you're trying to stay focused. So take me through that moment that you tied it up. Yeah. I mean, honestly, not much was going through my head besides, you know, like you have to score. Like there's no other option really. Um, but yeah, like I said, just – when the whistle was blown for the foul, just kind of calming myself because I knew I was the number one penalty taker um, for that game. So just just remembering everything about my routine, my breathing techniques, um, just calming myself. But yeah, I mean, I definitely thought about the Memphis game. Oh, this goalkeeper probably scouted me. She probably watched our penalties. Um, but I think I ended up changing my side. She guessed the right way, though, which <laughs> made me a little nervous. But I made sure to hit it hard enough. <laughs> well, and and then, right. And it goes in. And then like about a half hour, hour later, here you are again on another PK to <laughs> this time to win it. But what is that like? Cause that is get, get mental there. Cause now, mm -hmm. okay, you've gone through it already once. So now she's going to see you a second time. How do you avoid this becoming too mental and just, Hey, just strike the ball. I mean, take me through that, how you deal with that from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, penalties are definitely, definitely mental. We've, <laughs> I've been watching the world cup and almost all those games, <laughs> I feel like have gone to penalties and I just feel like, yeah, it's so mental. I mean, just players who, I mean, stick to their routine. Like I said, all the, all the right, do all the right things. And honestly, I think it's sticking to your spot. I mean, hitting it hard enough because you got to give yourself the chance in the first place to even make the penalty. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely mental. I definitely thought about, okay, I'm fifth. If it gets to me, like, do I go the same way? Do I switch up my side? And then I kind of put myself in goalkeeper's shoe. And I was like, I would, I would predict that the kicker would want to switch it, but maybe she's thinking I'm thinking that. So I'll stick to the same side. So that's what I thought the goalkeeper thinks. So I ended up switching it so it worked out <laughs> well thankfully you're a cool you're as cool as customer as like leo messi is on his uh, penalty <laughs> kicks there for argentina take me through the moment you kick the ball it goes through the back of the net i tweeted at the time that's a moment that people are going to remember you when they bring up you, your name and ucf soccer that's the moment they're going to bring up that's going to go down in history what was it like as soon as the ball's in the back of the net what goes through mind in that whole celebration yeah, I mean, I I can't help but smile right now. I was just so, so happy. I mean, I turned to my teammates and they're all sprinting. They're all like, I I don't even know how to celebrate. Like I was just jumping in the air. I mean, it was, it was such an exciting moment. I don't even think I turned to Caroline after and she didn't even like know that we won until people started running at her. And I was like, Carol, how did you not know that? She was like, oh, I was just preparing myself for the next penalty and I was like okay <laughs> but yeah I mean I I knew that if I made it we were through and I mean yeah just that your adrenaline's pumping I mean when it went in I was just so so happy and so excited is that something as a player you dream of a moment like that in PK's number one and then number two do players like 
matches being decided on penalty kicks or would you rather be i mean i'm, I'm fascinated by that because that's become a hot topic is like man it, it i always feel bad when it comes down to pks because i feel bad like it's a shame that somebody's going to lose on a pk which is so it's just crazy i, I can't even imagine the emotions that you all go through so what is you know would you rather that you keep playing do you like it how it's finished and then is, is that something you dream of yeah i mean i've i've been thinking about that a lot lately with the world cup like i said and then just me personally going through it with yeah winning against nc state and then losing against ucla both on penalties i mean it's definitely it's definitely an emotional roller coaster but i mean it's a great feeling when you win but yeah it's definitely heartbreaking when you lose um Personally, I would just want to keep playing, but I know that <laughs> bodies can't take that. I mean, 110 minutes is a lot. So, yeah. You mentioned Carol was getting ready for the next penalty kick if she needed to do that. And, you, you know, she came in clutch right there at the end, get, blocking those last, those last two penalty kicks that NC State had to open the door for you guys to get it with that, with that, with your penalty kick. Talk about how key having Delio through this entire process has been because she's now worked her way up to fourth all time for the most saves in, in, in UCF history. And that doesn't even count her penalty kick saves. Yeah, I mean, Carol's been great. We've been friends since our freshman orientation at UCF. Um, I mean, yeah, just having her as a leader in the back line, her communication, everything is just so great. Um, she's such a selfless player and just cares for everyone on the team. And just knowing that we have her in goal is just so comforting. Because <laughs> we, know, we know she holds herself to a high standard. Um, we know she's going to get the job done. So, yeah, I mean, just having her as pretty much our brick wall is 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 great and i know the team's gonna be lucky to have her again for one more year now you you said that she and diana have extra years of eligibility right mm -hmm. so talk to me about diana because i mean if there's anybody that i would say had a breakout season on this team it, it'd be her mm -hmm. i definitely agree yeah i mean yeah she was great for us this season i know in the past she's she's definitely struggled with like injuries um knocks here and there but I think this year she she kind of um took some more responsible responsibility and accountability and just realized like hey I, I gotta get this together and gotta perform start performing for the team like she she was probably getting jealous of seeing all these like oh these Kristen Kristen had like goals I want to score goals you know I mean that's what you do as a forward and so I think she just realized like all right time to focus time to grind type of thing um but yeah she definitely definitely helped us have our success this season you mentioned Kristen Scott obviously one of year she had offensive play their great career one of the great goal scorers ever you've had a great view of a lot of her goals mm -hmm. what makes her such a great goal scorer yeah I mean I think for me it's it's so easy to play with her um I mean we we played in club together too so I think just having that connection with her made it that much easier for me. But I mean, yeah, her movement off the ball, like as she knows as soon as we just play so well together, she knows as soon as I pick my head up, like I'm looking for her, she knows what run I'm looking for from her. I mean, she's just, she's so creative off the ball. I think um, where she just frees herself and gets herself away from the defender that it's very hard to play against her. And then obviously her speed, just like Diana, like, it's killer. So, yeah. You, of course, lost Kristen for a little bit during the during the middle of the season. I mean, once you once you kind of talk to first about kind of adjusting with, you know, not having her on the pitch. And then once she finally got at, got out, what was I guess? Did anything change from before or were you or were you just like, there we go back to our old selves offensively? Yeah, I mean, that's where I think the depth came in again, I think. That's also what kind of helped Diana have her breakout season. We have so many good forwards. I mean, Ellie, we lost towards the end of the season, but think about before we had Ellie, we have Kristen, we had Diana. So those three were kind of rotating. Mal, Tiana, um, all, all of them up top were kind of rotating. And I think that's where we like kind of allowed ourselves to have that injuries and be okay um, because we had that much depth. 
course, you're you're a midfielder of the year, the American in 2021. You'll go down as one of the great midfielders in, in the program's history, which is saying a lot. There's a lot of great names in that position. But and you play a fascinating position because you know, I've filled in on the some of the broadcasts and we've talked about a lot of the responsibilities that you have that a lot of people don't understand. Describe being a midfielder and all the responsibilities that you have because the, the box score doesn't tell the whole story of, of your value and what you bring to the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> definitely hard to put it into words, but I mean, I think Tiff qu- quoted once that I'm like a unsung hero. I think that's pretty much the best way to put it. I mean, kind of do all the dirty work, um, which I'm completely fine with because I, I don't, I don't mind not being in the spotlight. I, I love seeing my teammates um, shine. So for me to be able to assist them doing that, um, to be knowing that I'm a part of the defense that helps Carol make those saves and a part of the, the attack that helps Kristen score those goals is, is perfectly um, fine with me. I love that knowing that I can help my teammates in that way. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot, a lot goes into the midfield. I mean, just the IQ of the soccer game, um, vision. Yeah. There's, there's so much to being a midfielder, (laughs) right? Ball control, time possession, making the right passes to set up the next pass, right? It's like the old saying, the hockey assist, like to say you, you set up the the goal with the first pass that sets up the next pass to the goal. I mean, that's a big, that's happened so many times. I I think back to some of the goals earlier and throughout the year, how do you feel about your fellow midfielders that you played with? And then moving forward, I mean, that's going to be obviously big shoes to fill for whoever kind of fills in your spot now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the midfielders are pretty much like the quarterback of the team. Um, I mean, they just have a calming presence. And I think, yeah, the midfielders that we have, Mia, Katie, Annika, I mean, so many, so many amazing um, soccer players on our team uh, that play in the midfield. And I think they, they know what the standard is. They know how to be successful now. Um, And I think they will be with under Tiff's leadership. Yeah, you mentioned. I mentioned, you, that's, that's a good point. Let me ask you about Tiff. You mentioned Coach Tiff. This year, Coach Tiff split time with obviously coaching you and co- being an assistant with the U.S. national team. Tim Sahadak obviously coached some of the matches. I joked with Coach Tiff when I saw her at the selection show that I, I, got, I got to see more of Tim and talk to him more than her all year long. Uh, yeah. What was it like for you all as players? Because, you know, and I know she told me you all been, you're used to this because this is what was going on in the spring. What is that like from a player standpoint where your head coach is away, but you got Tim there at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think our culture, like ever since my freshman year, we've, we've continued to add um, such like great things to our culture that now the time that I'm a senior, it's just that much greater of a culture. And I think that um, with Tiff being gone, I think we realize we're losing like our motivation, you know, like, someone holding us more, more of like our voice of our team, because Tim, Tim is a little more quiet. Um, So that's kind of where she just looks at the players, us captains, we kind of took more responsibility. And so it was just on us to be that voice while Tim still leads. But yeah, I mean, definitely in the spring, we kind of had that. So we knew what to expect. So we were, we were fine with it. Yeah. That's wild. That's just wild. How much? How how much are Tiff and Tim kind of like a team? Because I remember looking back at their career and they were co-head coaches at, at VCU. Is it does it does it kind of feel like that? It's sort of like Tim, it's just kind of an associate in name only, and it's sort of like a kind of a a co a co a, I guess co leaders as far as head coach goes. Yeah, I mean, I think their their partnership is is, I mean, obviously husband and wife, but it's like they they don't overlap. It's all like Tiff is amazing at one thing and Tim is amazing at the other. And so them together, like makes, makes the program what it is, you know? So, um, we, we get everything we need because we have the both of them. And I think that's, if one wasn't there, we wouldn't be as successful. So having them both, um, really helped us succeed this year. What's it been like playing for coach Tiff, who the credential speaks for itself. She's, part of the you that 99 world cup i mean it was kind of ironic the track you all took in the tournament i teased her about it you start out in, in raleigh where she played professionally in that state of north carolina obviously played at chapel hill in north carolina in her college career but then you all go to los angeles 
which is the site, the city that hosted her most memorable moment in, in her international career in the Rose Bowl. I don't know if she brought that up during the trip or not, but what, what was it like? What's it like coaching for somebody, a figure like her who's so significant in the sport? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to have her as a coach, um, but not only as a coach, just as a as a role model, um, someone that all of us look up to. We want to um, aspire to be her. I mean, she's she's just great. I mean, <laughs> coming in as a freshman, she's – I don't even know if she first talks about soccer. She, I think with me, she was just like, we're here to develop you as a person and then as a soccer player as well, you know, so – that's just how, how she takes care of her players. I mean, that's how she built the culture, um, that we have on our team. She just cares so much about the people. Um, and then also wants to develop soccer skills. So, yeah. I wanted to ask you because you mentioned among the midfielders, Mia Asenho. Now I remember that she was listed as a forward on the roster, but, but she ended up being, you know, unanimously selected to the all a rookie AAC team as a midfielder so can you talk of, i know that mia was out in 21 because of an, an injury so can you talk about just kind of the evolution that mia has gone is she more of a mid now is she more of a forward a bit of both yeah yeah i mean i think that's what's great about mia she's so versatile we can kind of put her wherever <laughs> um but yeah i mean she's she's a she's a young leader on this team she has a voice um she she'll definitely use it. She'll, she'll lead, she'll help this team grow. Um, I think, yeah, that's just what is so great about her is we can, she's, she has so many qualities that we can use her up top. If we want her to hold the ball, we can use her speed. We can use her size, her strength, and we can use it up top or in the midfield, just depending on what the game asks for. Obviously, your season ends at UCLA PKs it was a, ma a magnificent match. I mean, I met me and Bryson actually did a watched it. It was incredible. A lot of people were into it. I know the result hurts, but does the fact that UCLA ended up winning the national title, does that make it easier, harder? Like, I mean, there's a lot, I mean, you played a great team, a great match. And uh, as Bryson mentioned earlier, you ended up playing the two best teams in the country, North Carolina and UCLA in the years. So how does, how do you put that into words there now that you've had time to reflect? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> watching it back, I wanted them to lose just because I was so, I was so heartbroken still. I was so bitter. I was like, I don't want them to win anything else <laughs> farther than they've come. <laughs> I mean, but obviously, yeah, it was great knowing that we've played UCLA, we've played UNC, and those are the two teams in the national championship. Um, and knowing that we performed well against both of them was just incredible too. So that's what makes me proud of the team. Um, but yeah, I mean, now, now looking back on it, I'm not as, I mean, I'm definitely still heartbroken, but not as salty towards UCLA. So, I mean, yeah, knowing, knowing that I can say like, yeah, like that, that could have been us, like knowing that they won, like, and we tied them, that definitely could have been us. So makes it a little bit easier now, I guess. Yeah. And the polls, the polls respected you. They finished, you finished in the top 25 and all the major polls. Right. Uh, and then I'm curious when you saw that it was Carolina against UCLA, you played both. Did a part of you kind of like, Oh, I know how this is going to go. Or like, I'm curious, what's it like to see two teams you actually literally played? Yeah. The, like, what's it like? Are you like thinking in your head? Oh, I think this is what they're going to do. Like, are you thinking as a player? What, what's it like? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely thought that way just cause I mean, you think of the styles that both teams have. I, I definitely thought UNC was going to win just because, I'm obviously I have that midfield mentality. I'm all about the possession, the calmness of the game. And I think UNC has a lot more of those qualities than UCLA. Um, so I definitely thought that those individuals would overpower UCLA, but I think UCLA just came in there with a game plan. I mean, they, they didn't mind defending for most of the game and then kind of just going on the counter attack. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of knew it was going to be that way because that's almost how we played against them. We had a lot of the possession um, and then they they would counter. So I had a feeling it was going to come out like that. But I mean, kudos to them for for coming back. So, yeah, you've had this, I guess, core because a lot of these fifth year, fifth year seniors came back just for that type of moment, I imagine. And, you know, you ended up making the most of your last season. But you mentioned that Day and Caroline have extra years of eligibility, which means it's the end of the road for you, Kristen, 
CAC, you know, like that, that small group of you that have all been together since that 2018 team kind of one, what is it like to be able to have this last season as a full group and get to where you did? And then how important is having uh, day and Caroline back for next year, kind of help preserve that leadership continuity and how does it feel to be kind of, you know, you're, you, you five are kind of, you're going your separate ways now in a way. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely bittersweet. I'm, I'm about to go back to UCF to say bye to Matu. She'll, she'll be going back to France. I mean, so definitely, definitely um, grateful for the memories that we we've made here um, on and off the field. I mean, we've all grown so close together. Um, and I think the team's going to be super, super lucky to have those two coming back. I mean, they, they've obviously known what the culture's like. They know how to be successful. They know um, how to hold their, their other teammates accountable. So it, they're, they're going to set this team up for success. I, I have no doubt that they'll go back to the tournament. Well, you all left a great legacy with this incredible year, memorable year. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, commentating, by the way, you, you, you got a future in commentating if you want to consider <laughs> that. I, I'm just throwing that out there. But what's next for you? You mentioned that you're graduating and all, but what's next for you? Yeah, I mean, I'll put my name into the draft. Draft is January 12th for the NWSL. So we'll see, go on trials, different teams. Um, definitely just still want to play pro. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, after after my playing career is over, I definitely want to get back into coaching because I feel like that's uh, my teammates always tell me like, oh, Daria, just come back like next year and coach us with under tip. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I would, <laughs> but I'm still healthy to play. So I'm going to play first and then, then maybe come back to coaching. Ooh, I like what does coach that. Tiff think about yeah. that? I feel, like, I feel like I'm going to be, yeah, she, she like sees herself in me. Like, I feel like I'm going to be a mini her. And I even told, I even told my boyfriend, I was like, we're literally going to be Tiff and Tim. <laughs> That's my goal in life is to be like them. There you go. So you're just taking notes as you're playing. Like, all right, that's not a bad coaching thing there. Okay, that's good. And that's yeah. a good resource to have too for advice. Yeah, exactly. And then maybe I'll be like Carly Lloyd and go be a TV analyst. And then maybe Ooh. I'll get into commentating. We'll see. I, I oh, Listen, you're speaking my language right now. Well, <laughs> let's talk there. Well, what's the last, my la our last question. What do, what's the message you want to give Night Nation, who's enjoyed watching you play for all these years and, you know, you bleed black and gold. You'll be around. I don't, I don't, I don't like saying, you know, you're going to be around. It's always like, yeah. see you later is kind of the more appropriate term, but what, what do you, what, what do you want to say to night nation and, and how do you want people to remember your career and this group for that matter this year? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll definitely be around. I mean, we, we couldn't have done all, all what we've done without night nation. I mean, I would always go, go on Twitter, go on Instagram after games and just to see their, love and support from us not only like to our team I see I see all their messages to the basketball teams um to the football team to softball baseball all those teams and just knowing that we have such a strong fan base and a support system really means the world to all of us athletes like these these fans and and families um they have no idea what it means we may not show it or express it all the time but it really does mean a lot to us um so yeah just want to thank them for that. Um, thank you guys for everything that you guys do for us. Um, definitely doesn't go unnoticed. I promise. Well, that, that means a lot. It's certainly, uh, it's been a pleasure watching you play all these years. It's going to be weird not seeing you on the midfield next year. I will, uh, <laughs> Bryce and I will be out there in the midfield in the first opener. Like where, where's Daria? Oh, <laughs> she's not here. That's right. She's moving on. Maybe you're in the booth though. We never know. Maybe uh, I'll be on the sideline coaching. Who knows? Or that too. Uh, <laughs> But hey, look, no, congrats, on a, so congrats on an incredible career, an incredible year uh, and career. Uh, it's you. been an honor to watch you play. And uh, thanks for everything you've done and all the great memories uh, you've left us here with uh, at UCF. Thank you, guys. I'm definitely going to be one of those alums on, on, the, on the sideline cheering the girls on still. So I appreciate it.